What's going? What's going on? Chemistry or not chemistry students? <laughs> what's going on, seventh grade uh, science students? We're, let's get this party started. So check this out. You folks are asking about when the when the, the your filters are due. Okay. Here's my answer. On Wednesday, we're going to be um, I'm going to be showing you how to test additional things, like for example, phosphates, nitrates, nitrites. You guys don't understand what that is now, right? Nitrates, nitrites, phosphates. That's what today's class is. I'm going to explain to those things, or to you those things. Um, on so on Wednesday, I want you to bring in your first prototype of your filter, all right? And and we'll we'll test them out, and we'll see if your your filters will actually be able to filter out these different nitrates and nitrites and phosphates. And we'll check the pH of all, all of these things. We'll do more advanced tests because two weeks ago I basically made dirty water for you and had you look at it, and that's not very scientific. Oh, it looks a little bit cleaner, blah blah blah. You know what I mean? So what I want to do is do more, more science-based tests, and that's what we're going to do. So yes, your first, your first filter is due this Wednesday. Because you need to have something that will filter the water. Does that make sense? So bring in your filters into lab on Wednesday. But the final, after you folks test it out and say that you guys get it, so that is like, wow, this thing did amazing, or wow, this thing didn't do very well at all, then I want you to refine it, rebuild it, redesign it, and, and get uh, your your filters to be better. And then on the 30th, that's when we're having the filter fest. That is where you folks are going to be coming in and um, be, you're going to be building, or you're going to not be building, but you're going to be demonstrating your filter to everyone in the seventh grade and eighth grade. Got it? So I'm bringing in all the seventh graders and all the eighth graders and the, everyone's building a filter and we're going to have a competition to see who can get the best quality water and all of that kind of stuff. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So that's when your final filter is due. Got it? 30th. On the 30th. Yeah. And so on the 30th, I probably also want your team to give a five minute presentation. That thing's pretty easy. Um, if you cannot make it, um, you, no, you're building one as a team, not one each. And Bo, aren't you in group one? Yeah. So, so Bo, you're you're with uh, you're with the team that came in over here. Cause I had group one come in. Yeah. So so your your team already built the prototype, but it and it works. It might not work. Maybe it it probably could work better, and you folks could probably redesign it and re and and re re engineer it and all of that kind of stuff. Or Bo, if you built one yourself, then see Bo built one. Uh, by themselves. So what maybe what we could do is we could run the water through your filter first and then one run it through the other filter and then just kind of combine it. You know what I mean? Make it really tall and 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 have it just run through all of them. So aren't we supposed to have it like up to three feet tall or something like that? Yes, I actually have a uh, a restrictions on it and I typed it up this morning. So I haven't given you this document officially but um I guess I can share this with you already. Um, I need to probably send this out, but I need to send this out, information out. But um, I uh, haven't finished doing all of the tests on it yet. So I might send out a little bit of information uh, regarding this, the criteria. Your entire project can't exceed $20. Okay. Yes, Jonathan, on Wednesday you'll be able to, to uh, see your prototype fixed or, or tested. So your entire project cannot exceed $20. So make sure you folks keep a documentation of how much money you've spent on it. And this is not $20 each student. This is $20 all together. And personally, I would rather you not spend any money. I think that you can do this without spending any money. A lot of you folks are saying, well, we need activated charcoal and everything. Well, you could make your own charcoal. Just get wood and burn it. Charcoal. Done.
But if you already spent the money, okay, I understand that. Um, make sure you distribute it amongst your, your teammates. Make sure you, you think you do what it is fair. I'm going to limit you uh, to be up to $20. And activated charcoal just means charcoal with air blown through it. Because what it does is it, 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 it cleans out that charcoal of all the and, and allows all those pores to be, uh, you know, be to to be activated to have uh, space for it to go through. Your windmill project, I do want you folks to try that, but I'm kind of rethinking that. So I want you folks to work on that, but I might be, I might be making that a little bit. I might be changing that aspect. Definitely the filter. We're doing the filter at Filter Fest, guaranteed. The windmill portion, I think, might be a bonus thing. I don't, I don't know if it's a requirement, but I don't want to, you know, I don't want to discourage you fo folks from from making it because the filter isn't really. The filter is a challenge, but it's not really that. Like it, it, did a, it shouldn't take four weeks to build it. It probably should take a, you know, I mean, one afternoon you folks get together and, 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 and build it you know what I mean so the filter isn't necessarily like uh, the hardest part about it so I wanted to add an extra component just in case you finished early and I wanted to give you folks a challenge um, you won't be getting an F if you don't build the windmill you know so, so it's amazing or whatever but all right yeah both um, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about what what's uh, what happens uh, when you're when the water goes through your filter and it actually might cause more damage I apologize for my assignments being confusing I'll make sure to fix it Titus you're screaming my name well at least internet screaming my name uh, Mr. Sadie didn't listen to Chelsea oh okay Titus you can ask your question anytime let's let me kinda go through this some of the uh, parameters I'm putting on this project is y the thing can't exceed $20. Uh, I'm going to make a restriction on the size of the project. The diameter of the filter can't be more than 6 inches, which is a pretty big filter. And also, uh, it can't exceed a height of 4 feet. So let's make it that. Because if not, that's, that's, uh, that's bad. Did Titus ask his question? Oh. What if you already have the stuff? Does that count as uh, money spent? That's a good question. Um, I don't think so. I think that if you just happen to have it lying around, then that shouldn't count as, as money spent. Does that make sense? All right. Um, let's see. Don't drink any of the water in this experiment or you might die. Um, you will have 30... Or so, so what I'm going to do is probably do something like we're going to... You'll have 30 minutes to complete or to filter as much water as you can. When you build the filter, what I want you to do is draw a line at the very top of the reservoir where you fill the water in. So that way, when I'm when I'm pouring in the water, I can make sure that the water is continuously going in. That is, if of course we don't do the windmill part. Got it. I'll explain more of that maybe on Wednesday when you folks come in. Um, basically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to. Get you folks into three different test or categories: category one, category two, and category three. And then, uh, if you know the first, the the best person in the category one will uh, be able to filter the most amount of water in that thirty minutes. Does that make sense? Yeah, a thirty minutes is a long time to filter water, but it's not easy to get the water into category one quality so maybe if your water is being filtered way too quickly then maybe you folks need to slow down your water or your filter because uh, maybe it's going through and it's not filtering out everything that it needs to does that make sense so I think 30 minutes is actually a good amount of time it's a good amount of time to be able to get the amount of water that you would want, but be able to filter high quality water. Because that's what we're going for. We're not going for just put a t-shirt across a bucket and pour that thing in. Got it? 
And I'm putting the size restrictions on there. Jonathan, what's up? You're asking lots of questions. I just want to make sure you're good. Um, Titus, no, I'm not going to pay you real money. Actually, I, I've, I've taken the the money component out of it because I, yeah, I don't understand the line thing. Oh, Jonathan, I'll explain that to you in lab on Wednesday. All right. Chelsea, I will talk to your leadership uh, t teachers and I will try to make sure that it's spaced out. So that way I'm not assigning you homework on the, on the, on the same time as the leadership thing. Now that's something I usually don't do because, I mean, in college your teachers don't talk to each other, you know, or in, in, in high school at the higher level. But for the seventh graders, I, can, I, I, I could hang with that. I could dig that. So I'll, I'll make sure, yeah, it, in college or in, in high school, you folks have, have to just kind of get a good schedule and start working a little bit on each assignment. I mean, that's just the way it is. And if you take like six classes, then you've, you know, then you're in trouble. But I mean, then you've, you've got a lot of work to do. And that's just the way it is. Yeah. I mean, if you think about it, your boss gives you a project and maybe another person gives you another project and they're not going to be like, well, you're working hard on this one, so I'm not going to make you work too hard on that one. They just be like, I need this thing done. Does that make sense? All right. Um, I am working on a slideshow or the, the rules for the slideshow. You're gonna, each team is going to need to present a five-minute slideshow discussing the various aspects of the project. I will send you folks this document when I'm done with it as far as what's going on. Um, the, the, um, the slideshow, if you cannot make it, which I'm really telling everyone, you need to make it. But if you absolutely cannot make it, for example, if you're off island and you, I mean, if you're on Kauai and you just couldn't buy a plane ticket, I understand that. You know what I mean? It's expensive to fly. I can hang with that, even though we're reimbursing you for the thing. Um, then what you might want to do, or then what you're going to need to do is you still need to be a part of the presentation. The presentation will be done at the Filter Fest. Your team will be going up and talking about the project, or talking about the thing, sharing slides of, 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 your, of your thing, sharing slides of you folks testing it, those kinds of things. Um, what you might want to do is record like a one minute video on, uh, you know, as your portion of the speaking and send that to your team and then they can play that video of your part of the presentation if you absolutely cannot make it. Does that make sense? All right. So did I answer all the questions about the filter or did I answer the questions about the filter so far? How will the slideshow be sent to us? Um, I'm still making the parameters of the slideshow. I probably should be able to get that out to you by Wednesday. And um, what I would do is I would just make a Google presentation. That way everyone can work on it together. Does that make sense? I would just do that. I would have one person in your team make a Google presentation. All right. If your team already started on the wind pump, that's awesome. I'm going to make it so that make it so that the wind pump doesn't necessarily need to be connected to your filter itself. Make it so that it could be separate. Because what I might do is is keep them separate. I might I might make them as separate categories. Sound fair? Okay. I actually already started building my wind pump as well. I'm not going to be competing against you. I just thought, well, can I? You know, can I even do this project? Am I giving you folks something that I can do? I don't have a whole lot of time because I'm teaching like four classes, but I'm doing the best I can. All right. So if I answer all the questions, let's talk about biogeochemical cycles. Biogeochemical cycle. That's a huge word. Let's break it down. Sound good? All right. What is a biogeochemical cycle? So bio means... It means life, as you can read from the slideshow, or 
it basically, I mean, biology is the study of? Life. Of life. There we go. Geo means earth. And the parts of the earth are land, air, and water. Okay. So, biogeo means life on earth. Right? Chemical means? Molecules. Molecules. Right. And compounds. It means chemicals. It means, so we're studying the life on earth, the chemicals in the life on earth. That's what biogeochemical means. Is that now a crazy hard word? No, not really. It's just three parts of a word that, I mean, three things that kind of go together and make sense. And then, as Jonathan's pointing out, a cycle means repeatedly, or uh, it, it means reoccurring, right? There's a cycle of, of light in the day, right? There's, it, it gets uh, super light in the, in the, in the uh, noontime, and then it gets dark at midnight. And then it gets light in the noontime, and it gets dark at midnight. And that cycle continues every single time. Does that make sense? All right. So what we're looking at is the cycling of chemicals or materials or compounds that is happening within the environment and organisms that are in the environment. Biogeochemical cycles. Big word makes sense as what to what it means. Got it? So, what are some examples of a biogeochemical cycles? The water cycle, which I feel like you folks have should have covered back in sixth grade. I probably won't be spending too much time on this today, uh, on the water cycle, because I, I feel like this is like a third grade, fourth grade, sixth grade topic. All right? The nitrogen cycle, that's something I'm going to introduce heavily today. Um, the phosphorus cycle, the carbon cycle. Now, um, the, the, the carbon cycle you folks might have seen before. Um, what is this image? Why do I have sheep grazing inside of a field? Well, it's because um, plants have nitrogen in them, and then the organisms eat the plants, which contain nitrogen, which contain the good nitrogen in them, and that's a part of the nitrogen cycle. So we'll go through that. Cycles. A cycle means it's not a definite beginning or end. This thing just kind of goes around in a circle. There is no, where is the beginning of a circle? There's not really a beginning or an end. It's just kind of, you can start anywhere in a circle and just continue along in that circle. Whereas like the food chain the energy flows is unidirectional. What that means is energy flows from the lowest part of the food chain to the highest part of the food chain. We talk about different like parts of the food chain. Somebody has their microphone on. Yeah, the reason why I'm echoing is because somebody else has their computer, which has a speakers and, and, a, um, and it has their speakers going at the same time as their... Uh, microphone, I think. No, it, yeah, it, they have their microphone on. Turn off your microphone. That's important. Also, it's also really good if you use headphones. Got it? Yeah, but no one's supposed to have their speaker on, except Mr. Dalding. Gabe, can you turn off your mic, your your speaker? All right, that might help out a lot. Actually, I think that did help out a lot. Okay, so this these cycles that we're talking about doesn't use up any of the matter. It just transforms it. It just turns one thing into another. For example, the water cycle. You have water, and then ice, and then um, gas, and all of that kind of stuff. That's not different things, those are all water. They're just different forms of it. It transforms it from one form to another form, but it's still the same kind of stuff. And I didn't, if I have water and I melt it uh, and I turn it into liquid, or if I have, if I have uh, solid ice and I melt it and turn it into liquid, that didn't change the amount of matter that I have. I still have the same amount of stuff. I just might have a different, um, 
form of it. Does that make sense? If I have 100 kilograms of ice and I melt it, how much water am I going to have? 100 kilograms. I'm going to have whatever I started off with. I can like add to it or make to it, make something from, you know, thin air or something like that, make something appear. Does that make sense? All right. And a biochemical process. It passes the same molecule compound element through the biosphere over and over and over. It goes from organism to organism. What is a biosphere? That's my question to you. What do you think a biosphere is? If you don't know, say IDK, because this is kind of an advanced topic. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, all right. All right, you think of earth and sphere? Uh, well, the bio means what? Life. It means life. So it's talking about the area or the zone where life exists. Now, is the entire earth a biosphere? I've got some people saying yes, I've got some people no, saying no. Like let's say from the atmosphere below, is that a biosphere? Is there living organisms everywhere? Okay, Quinn says yes, Jonathan says yes, you folks are saying yes. I would probably exclude the center of the earth. In fact, I would probably exclude a lot of the inside of the earth because it's too hot down there. I mean, maybe we might be able to find uh, life down there, but I would pretty much exclude, like, everything below a mile, you know, below the surface of the Earth. Because it's pretty much just dense rock and superheated uh, magma down there. Does that make sense? So I would say it's interesting because the biosphere isn't actually a circle on Earth. I would say that if you think of a biosphere, the Earth as a basketball... It would be like wrapping the basketball inside of a t-shirt and then their biosphere is that area of the t-shirt is that thin layer that goes around the earth does that make sense because the thin layer includes our oceans and all the land creatures and birds in the air and all of that kind of stuff but then most of the earth is also you know solid rock and living organisms don't exist in that solid rock area does that make sense so that's what I mean by biosphere. I basically mean the area where there's life. Biochemical cycles. There's the carbon-oxygen cycle. You folks know that, right? There's the uh, we breathe in oxygen, we breathe out what? Carbon. The carbon turns into, or the carbon, uh, the, the plants breathe in carbon, the, the plants breathe out breathe um, uh, oxygen. oxygen there we go all right good let's go over the water cycle now what time do i finish again dang man these these things go quick <laughs> why do i gotta go so quick all right i'm gonna talk as quick as possible i'm gonna go through the water cycle really quickly your homework isn't i mean i think last week's homework was on the water cycle but basically here's what's going on you got the oceans and then through condensation, the water evaporates. Or no, no, it, uh, the sun causes the water to evaporate. That's these guys right here. That evaporation uh, causes the water to turn into a gas, and there's gas. Uh, there's uh, water molecules in gas form in the air. And then that, uh, if it's cool enough, it causes things to condensate. The condensation is what makes the clouds. Then through a process called precipitation, also known as rain. Um, the, the, the water falls down and or turns into snow or ice or whatever, and it hits the land or it hits the water, and it basically goes through that process over and over again. If it hits the land, then you have this thing called surface runoff where we have the, the water uh, going along the surface and just running straight back into the ocean. Or... It could go into our groundwater storage system, which we've already talked about in great detail. You have different things like a perched water storage or a the impounded dikes. Those things we talked about last week. Um, you also have uh, seepage and evapotranspiration. 
that sounds horrible. All that is is um, the water goes into the plants, right? The plants take that water and can release it back into the atmosphere through a process called evapotranspiration. It occurs when water, uh, when, when, because leaves have small holes in them, and the stomata of the leaves release that water back into the atmosphere. Some of you folks might be familiar with it. I've got one person right next to me going, oh, yeah, that's, yeah I know what that is. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. You've, you've seen this before. All right. Some terminology. I think it's transpiration. All right. You got evaporation. I, I totally apparently didn't spell that out. Out all right. It's not transportation. All right. I don't think Google knows what I'm talking about. You got evaporation, which is water uh, turns into water vapor. You got transpiration, which is water evaporates through the smata of plant leaves, which we which become water vapor. Okay. The stomata is the tiny openings inside of the leaves of the plants. We'll probably get into that a little bit later. You have condensation. Condensation is an important word. Uh, condensation is where you have um, water turning into clouds. The water vapor cooling down, turning into clouds. You've got precipitation. I need to get to the nitrogen cycle. I'm going to skip over this water cycle if that's all right with you. Sound, sound all right? All right. I've got, let's see, water cycle impact. All right, the nitrogen cycle has something to do with lightning. Where is nitrogen found in living things? It crea it's created in proteins, nucleic acids, and more. Do you think nitrogen is important? What is nucleic acid? Does anyone know anything about nucleic acid? I'll give you a hint. Nucleic acid, well, obviously the abbreviation for nucleic acid is Na, right? In humans, it's a part of something that's very important to us. What do you think that we have in our bodies that have Na in it? There's also another letter that goes in front of it. Not acid. It's a three-letter acronym that has N-A at that last two letters. The first letter is the fourth letter in the alphabet. DNA. Oh. Right? DNA is important to us, right? We, it's important that we have DNA and be able to have nucleic acid to be able to build more of that stuff. And so we need those proteins and stuff like that. So we need this nitrogen. Here's the problem, folks. Nitrogen, there is a lot of nitrogen in our atmosphere. There's a gas called N2, and technically this 2 is supposed to be small. It's a chemical formula, N2, just like H2O has a small 2 on it, N2 has a small 2 on it as well. This is nitrogen that makes up 78 to 80% of our air. That's a good thing, right? Because we need nitrogen. Here's the problem. We cannot use nitrogen gas and that's what this is for me nitrogen gas we can't utilize that so what we need to count on is we need to count on two kinds of processes to be able to convert the nitrogen gas into good kinds of nitrogen that we can use the good nitrogens that we can use is nitrates and nitrites i'll explain that to you in a second those two processes that i'm talking about is a process called lightning and bacteria the lightning will convert the nitrogen gas into uh, into good kind of nitrogen that we can use. Bacteria in soil will also convert. In Hawaii, we don't get a lot of night lightning, although the last couple of weeks we've had a lot of lightning, right? The reason why we don't have a lot of lightning is because there's not a whole lot of land mass in Hawaii. There's a lot of land mass on the mainland. And they actually get much more lightning than we do over here. So a lot of our nitrogen is converted through the soil, not necessarily lightning in Hawaii. 
Because it's not that often that we get these big lightning storms. Although they're pretty cool when they happen. All right. What happens to the nitrogen gas is the nitrogen fixation, or what happens is it goes through a process called nitrogen fixation. Basically, you're fixing the nitrogen. It's coming from a form you can't use, N2, and putting it into a form that you can use, ammonia, NH4. This 4 should be small, and this positive should be uh, in the exponent side. I, I, I just didn't have time to write this thing nicely. But NH4 is called ammonia. And how is that ammonia being created? Well, the nitrogen gas is being sucked up into the plants. And the plants, particularly legume plants, are legumes. I can never pronounce this correctly. What are legumes? Does anyone know what legumes are? Nope. <laughs> They're Lego plants? Sweet! No. They're beans, a lot like your soybeans or your peanuts and all of those kind of stuff. Those are all legumes, uh, your lima beans. Um, so your bean plants changes these N2, uh, the bacteria inside these bean plants in the roots, changes the nitrogen gas into ammonia. That's a good thing. Got it? Um, so nitrification by bacteria uh, in soil changes it into nitrates and nitrites. All right, we'll get to there. Um, you also have, all right, so your next one that you need to know is nitrates and nitrites. Nitrates and nitrites have the chemical formula NO3 and NO4. Where do you think they get the O from? Because obviously we know where the nitrogen comes from, you know, the nitrogen in the atmosphere. The NH4, where do you think they get the, hi the hydrogen from? Probably from water and whatnot. Where do you think they get the O from? Oxygen, probably from water and stuff like that. And bacteria. And the bacteria turns that you know, uses that extra stuff. Let me explain this to you. I, I just gave you the full, you know, version. Let me kind of show you folks what's going on. Here's the nitrogen cycle. Got it? You've got N2 gas that's in the atmosphere. That N2 gas can either change into, we'll go down this way. It can either change into ammonia by, or ammonium by the roots of these legume plants or lightning. And in this diagram, I don't have my lightning, so I apologize. Got it? Um, the ammonia goes through a process, and, and that process of turning the nitrogen gas into ammonia, ammonium is called ammonification. That makes sense. Okay? Now, um, and that can either be uh, happen through A, lightning, B, through the roots of these legume plants, or it's also in the soil. The bacteria that we're looking for is in the soil. And the soil will convert the nitrogen gas into ammonium. Got it? That ammonium can turn into nitrites, NO2 minus, through a bacteria called nitrifying bacteria. This process is called nitrification. You also have other nitrifying bacteria that converts the nitrites to nitrates. Got it? Now, these nitrates are now in the soil, and what eats them up? What use? What does? What? How do we get the get these things into our body? Well, plants take up these nitrates, and that's a good thing. Animals eat the plants. Humans eat both the plants and the animals that eat the plants. So a lot of the a lot of our nitrogen comes from eating uh, meat and also plants that have these nitrogens in them. Does that, ma that make sense? Then, we, how do we put the nitrogen, how do we humans and bunnies put the nitrogen gas back into the system? Well, when either we poop, we pee, or we die. 
because our waste that we have, our poop has nitrogen in it. Our pee has nitrogen in it. Do you know what ammonia smells like? It kind of smells like pee. Um, and so what happens is then you have this thing called decomposers and also the, the rabbits die and humans die and we all get buried in the ground. And then that, uh, th those things will decompose and there's special kind of bacteria and fungi and mushrooms that will die and decompose and go back into ammonia. And that completes the circle of life. All right, I'm done with that. All right. So here's the problem. You would think that these nitrates and nitrites are a good thing, right? The nitrates and nitrites, what they do is they promote lots of bacteria in the water. Or what they do is they're very good for plants. Plants love nitrates and nitrites. If you want to grow a lot of plants, put lots of nitrates and nitrites inside of your thing. But what happens if I have too much of it in my water? If I have a lot of it in my soil, that's good. But if I have too much of it in my water, yes, exactly, um, Moani, is we have algae. Algae will eat it up and, and that's – and so what's wrong with that? Fish eat algae. What's the problem if I have too much algae in my system? Have you ever seen algae grow on top of water? Like really gross water and you have the algae growing on top of it? That will block the sunlight. If it blocks sunlight, the plants underneath won't be able to put oxygen into that water. And what happens when you have no oxygen in the water? Dead fish. Things die. Got it? Here's a diagram. It's a little bit more not complicated. It's just a little bit more uh, detailed about how humans affect the nitrogen cycle. For example, we put a lot of um, nitrous oxide and uh, mononitro oxide into the – or nitrogen monoxide, monoxide into the atmosphere through um, – our fossil fuel use when we burn uh, the gasoline that we use or our factories put a lot of this stuff into the atmosphere and it can come down as acid rain that's a bad thing so if humans put too much nitrogen or nitrates or nitrites inside of the water that's a bad thing so even though you think that it's a good thing because we're getting a lot of nitrogen in, into our human body system it's not a good thing if you upset the balance of this cycle All right, let's go through some terminology. Fixation. That's when the N2 gas is made into ammonia. How? Okay, all right, I know, it's 11.25. Yeah, yeah, okay, fine. <laughs> Tell you what, you guys can go if you want. <laughs> I'm going to keep on going, I'm sorry. Because you guys shorted me out like half an hour on Wednesday. Your folks were like, get out of here, Mr. Dalton, at 11.25. I don't want to even be next to you. And the thing is, you're not even next to me. So calm down, my friends. All right, all right. Okay, all right. I'm just, I'm just venting. But uh, let's see. How many more slides do I got? Oh, I got a few. Lots of words. I'll go through them quick. Promise. Okay. <laughs> Fixation. The nitrogen... The gas, N2, gets turned into usable forms of ammonia through lightning, legume roots, and things inside the soil. Got it? Oh. Nitrification. It's when the ammonia gets turned into nitrates and nitrites via bacteria. Assimilation. Sounds like something. Man, 1150. Yeah, 1155. All right. All right. Um, assimilation. It sounds like something that uh, would happen if you like assimilate or die or something. I don't know. Like you have to conform to this thing. I think there's this new movie, Divergent, right? It's supposed to be it's like, not new. All right. I, anyway, I don't. I, I haven't even seen it, so I don't keep up with this thing. But I've assumed that it's about assimilation, about trying to assimilate to everything. That's not has nothing to do with what we're talking about here. It's basically when the plants take up these nitrates and nitrites. And incorporate it into the 
amino acids and become proteins. Basically, plants eat the nitrates and the nitrites. Got it? Ammonification. It's when the plants and animals die and decomposers convert that or, or not only die, but they poop or pee. I know you folks always get a kick out of that one. And they convert those amino acids or they convert the thing back into amino acids and it returns it back into the soil. Humans move large amounts of nitrogen into the air and water through, through sewage treatments and fertilizers. We put lots of nitrogen everywhere in fertilizers, and that's not necessarily a good thing. They also have smokestacks. I'm not even going to cover that slide. All right. Health effects. What's wrong with drinking too much nitrates and nitrites? Well, I haven't really found a whole lot of problems with nitrates and nitrites, but I did find that six month, uh, infants below six months drinking too much water can actually get really sick and die. So don't feed your babies water that have lots of nitrates and nitrites in it. Algae bloom. We talked about how the algae bloom are, will, will the, if you have too much nitrates in your water, that will cause algae bloom. The algae bloom will cause dead fish. That's lots of dead fish. Where do you think that dead fish came from? It's because there's no oxygen in that water because there was an algae bloom that blocked all the sunlight that caused all the plants to... See, now you folks are all interested. Now you folks are like, oh, wait, where did the, all this dead fish come from? Well, yes, this is a real picture. I didn't Photoshop that. That's a dead, that's, they're dead fish. It's a lake of dead fish. You know, you folks are wondering, like, where did all of that come from? Well, here's, here's what's going on. Too much nitrates in the water. Bacteria will feed on that water. That bacteria also has lots of algae in it. Or the algae also feed on that, on that, on that nitrates. That so, stops all the sunlight and stops the process of photosynthesis. Also, the algae in the plants die. And that also causes a lot of bacteria that eats up a lot of the oxygen. So now these, all these fish die of suffocation. They suffocated in the water that they're swimming in because there's no oxygen in the water that they're swimming in. Crazy, huh? All right. The phosphorus cycle. It's a whole different cycle that I haven't had a chance to go through. And because you folks have been pushing me and pushing me and pushing me, I won't cover it today. But don't worry. I'll, I'll cover it next time. I, I'll be honest with you. I didn't think I was even going to get close to covering it today. I was hoping that I would finish the nitrogen cycle. Yeah, no, it's not your fault. Don't don't uh, don't feel bad. Yes, free fish for all. Actually, to be honest with you, I wouldn't eat the fish. I don't know if I would eat the fish. <laughs> if I saw a lake of dead fish, I wouldn't be like, "Sweet, let's grab all these fish and eat them." <laughs> I'd, I'd kind of be worried about the fish. But then again, if you know exactly how they died, which in this particular case. Is because they suffocated. And it's not because they ate some kind of poisonous water or whatever. Then, then sure, I would eat it. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's fine. No, they they didn't get poisoned. They just don't have oxygen in them. They stopped breathing. But I'm just saying, like, if I saw a big lake of dead fish, I couldn't necessarily say for sure, 100 percent. Oh, I know why the, those fish are dead. Those are fine to eat. Everybody go eat them. Remember, Mr. Dalde is not ever really telling you, hey, eat the fish and drink the water. Don't make me go on my big rampage again about saying don't drink the water. All right. How are you supposed to read Chapter 9 for the assignment? You folks are asking me about this. I'll tell you what. Let me take a look at that assignment again and redo it. I'll send out some uh, I'll send I'll send out an email finished. to help you out with that. I finished. Is it really confusing? No, I finished it. It was confusing but I did it. Okay. If you did it already, that's fine. Okay. I'll give you the points for it and you, you don't need to worry about it. But i I'm gonna probably change the assignment, not change the questions, just give you folks a little bit more instructions. Got it. All right. Um, any questions? Because I know that you folks are itching to get out of here. <laughs>
Um, I think I think Slater is talking about. I did the assignment, chapter nine, one already. Oh yes, don't drink the water. By the way, death, leptospirosis. Quinn, I apologize for not answering. To be honest with you, I don't answer over the weekend. I, I get to my emails as fast as I can, but I don't answer it over the weekend. The weekend's my weekend. I actually have homework I got to do. When I'm, you know, so I, I'm, I'm doing homework over the weekend. Plus, I'm spending time with my kids and all of that kind of stuff. I apologize. I mean, that's just... I'll, I'll get to it as, as quick as I can. And I, I'm sure that other teachers get to you guys, back to you folks over the weekend. I don't do that. I don't want to have what is that? I, and I'm sure that you love those teachers even more than me. And that's fine. That's fine. I can I can live with that because I love, I, I love my weekends. All right. On things if you email me. Okay. Uh, I'm not sure. Let's see. Am I supposed to have a textbook? No, there is no textbook. Um, anything that you need, I, I upload to the class. All right. I've got to go start up for my next class, but I'll talk to you folks later. Thank you for coming in. On Wednesday, I want you folks to come in for your lab and bring your water filters and... We're going to test for nitrates and nitrites, and now you understand what those tests are for. All right, Slater, I will, I will provide more instructions on Chapter 9, that homework thing. I'm not going to make it kill your grade or anything. And don't drink the water, but don't say that word. That's bad. See you Wednesday. Okay, bye.